Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015 from Studio C, brought to you by Cisco. Now your host, Stu Miniman. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.com, and you are watching SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube here in Oracle Open World 2015, here from the Cisco booth, 801, booth 801. Joining me for this segment is Dan Leary, who's the VP of Products and Solutions with Nimble Storage. Uh, Dan, it's been a little bit since you've been on the program. Welcome back. Thank you, it's great to be here, Stu. All right, so, 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 so Dan, you have the products and solutions uh, with Nimble Storage. Cisco's a big partner. What, what, what's been new in your world recently? So, you know, I think as you know, we've been a, a big partner of Cisco's for some time through what we call a set of smart stack integrated infrastructure solutions. And that's been a really blossoming partnership for us. The rate of joint customers that we've been building has been double the growth rate in our overall business. We put out a bunch of new smart stacks this year, Oracle being a big component of that. And we're really excited about the momentum that we've been building here. Yeah, so Dan, I, I think back, gosh, it was three or four years ago, Wikibon wrote the first industry's forecast on converged infrastructure. And everybody said we were nuts. We were like, in a, you know, two thirds to three quarters of all you know, storage solutions will be bought you know, in systems, in converged. Uh, you know, cloud, of course, is, is, has been growing much. Um, Things have changed quite a bit. What, what have you been seeing? You know, kind of how much of Nimble's business is, you know, in solutions like what, what you've got with Cisco, uh, in partnerships where we're building the whole stack, versus, uh, you know, just kind of having that storage standalone discussion. Yeah, I mean, there's no question that momentum. And I remember when you guys put that study out, there were a lot of eyebrows raised about the numbers that are in there, and what we've seen in our business has absolutely reflected that. You know, it has grown at an incredible pace. We talk to customers all the time, it makes sense, right? Whatever we can do to reduce that risk of deploying a solution and know that we're going to get the right answer has been really successful for us. But I think the other thing for Nimble has been some of the industry dynamics that have been going on, and we all work through these co-opetition partnerships that exist. But I think in many ways what we've seen happen in the industry, particularly the last few quarters, has been really favorable to Nimble. We're excited about what that's yeah. meant for us. Yeah, Dan, we, you and I were talking off camera a little bit. You know, the storage industry had certain kind of rules that were kind of tried and true. You know, we understand how you go in and fight, you know, how, how you get to the channel, how, how you build those relationships, and getting somebody off of one brand or making significant move, you know, shifts uh, was tough. I mean, you know, enterprise storage was, it was bought on risk. And you know, I, I have something, it works in my environment, but you know, it feels like things are loosening up. I mean, obviously, major changes. You know, massive acquisitions, new companies coming out. Uh, I mean, you guys are part of uh, some recent IPOs, uh, yeah. new players that, that are finding success in the marketplace. So, you know, can, can you kind of pinpoint what are some of those critical changes, and why are why are things kind of you know changing much faster? You know, it's true. I mean, I can remember back when we launched Nimble a little over five years ago, before this huge crop of change had occurred, and a lot of people said. Is there room for new storage startups at this day and age? How are you going to convince large enterprises to put their most trusted data on a startup? And if anything, when we predicted you know, that we were going to see some of the largest mainstream incumbents product lines give way to a new set of flash-centric storage architectures, again, a lot of skepticism. But what's interesting now, you know, I was talking to a couple of prospects of ours last week, and they're saying, look, with what's going on in the industry right now, it's not clear what the roadmap of some of our products are going to be, given some of the changes that are going on in the industry. And if anything, I think everyone's saying, look, I need to consider my incumbent, but I have to consider some of these newer entrants that are out there. It's almost less risky than kind of going with that proven course. And that's a big change from where we were just a couple of years ago. Yeah, so, I mean, Dan, on the one hand, Flash has been kind of this wave uh, that, that's been driving a lot of those changes in the architecture detectors, um, but you know, we, we kind of say it, it's, it's not just you know, one technology, it's you know, various pieces, uh, there's changing applications, uh, there, there's changing purchasing habits. Um, you know, boy, in the keynote last night, Intel was talking about the 3D X point, so uh, you know, where do you guys look at kind of the medium itself? I mean, you know, disk, flash, you know, potential re replacement kind of technology. You know, how important is that discussion versus uh, kind of the overall solution and uh, the, the partnership uh, that, that you're you're forging with your partners and customers? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. And you know, we look at it, you know, if, if you look back to our vision, we believe Flash was going to be this huge disruption, but it's an ingredient in solving
solving the problem. And we never viewed that Flash alone was going to be the answer to all these solutions. And so it's interesting, as we've seen some folks saying, it's going to be an all flash data center or flash alone will be the answer. And then we look at remarkable what Intel is potentially capable of doing with some of these. I can see a world where we're going to have multiple flavors of solid state in the data center. And I think it just speaks to there's enough complexity, enough going on with a mix of different applications that have a different need of requirements, right? Some need performance at all costs, some need a blend of performance and capacity. We have various needs of data protection. I think what we're going to find is architectures that have the ability to take advantage of multiple media, leverage their strengths while overcoming some of their weaknesses are going to be the wave of the future. And I think looking out five or six years, it may not be a world of flash and disk, it may be multiple blends of solid state media. It's going to be an exciting time for sure. All right, you, you bring up a great point. I mean, storage has been such he heavily fragmented marketplace. Uh, you know, it's not one market hack, it's not even 10 markets. There's so many different, you know, if you talk from the, the lowest SMB commercial customers all the way up to the big enterprises and then, you know, various workloads. Uh, I, I want you to comment. There's three big trends that we've seen, kind of the new architectures that get a lot of discussion. I'm, I'm curious how, how Nimble looks at this. You know, it's all flash arrays, it's hyperconvergence, uh, and then on the file side, things like the scale out NAS, uh, maybe a little bit of object in there. How, you know, how does Nimble play, and, and what, what do you what do you think? What you know, am I missing any, or you know, how, how does Nimble fit into those kind of discussions? No, those are three big trends, and I'll even bring up I think a fourth that fits into the picture in a moment too. But from an all-plash perspective, one of the big announcements that we made over this summer was the introduction of a software mode that we call all-flash mode in our system. And what's been really well received by that from our customers and prospects is the ability that says, instead of a customer needing to deploy different silos of infrastructure, so an all-flash array and all the results in complexity for performance apps, hybrid and the like, what we've said is, look, from a single consolidation platform, now within the power of our software, customer can turn the knob to give the performance that each app delivers. So those apps that want a hybrid experience, I hit the button and I've got that. An app that wants the all flash experience, and effectively what that's doing is it's pinning all of that data so that it's guaranteeing all the I.O. is being served out of flash. But the big advantage is I don't have to manage multiple platforms and often multiple different OS's and different interoperability. So we've seen a lot of interest and a lot of growth and demand from that from our customer base as a way that's moved up. And it's part of a trend we've seen for a while where we didn't assume a particular ratio of flash to disk within our systems. So four or five years ago, we had customers with three, four, five percent flash when we were competing primarily against disk arrays. Now we're seeing customers with 50% flash ratios, and they're serving all the I.O. out of flash, but for data protection, things like snapshots, they're still storing all that data very cost effectively on disk. So that's been a big shift, and that's how we've kind of played that advantage across flash. So, so, so if I system. hear it right, you're almost like creating multi-tenancy inside your own box, is that right? You can almost think of it that way. I think that's a good way to view it, right? Figure out what the app needs, and here's a really important part of that. None of that would really be possible if we didn't have the ability to have visibility into what was going on within those applications. And this is where I think there's a big trend going on with something you're familiar with from the past to what we call InfoSight, right? The ability to really, from the cloud, proactively manage all of this data. And I really think that's something that is changing the whole face of our industry. And I think looking at what we've seen from announcements in the industry today, everybody's saying, look, if you don't have some form of cloud-based analytics that can help predict what's happening, you're really not able to solve the problems of the modern flash data center. And so for us, InfoSight is now proactively addressing 90% of our customer problems, less than 10% of our customers calling us, and it's completely changed the relationship with our customers. And I think we're only seeing the beginnings of what those kinds of solutions can do within our industry. Okay, great, so that kind of covers the all-flash array piece. What, yep. what about the rest of those architectures we talked about? Yeah, so you, I think, mentioned hyperconvergence and convergence, and of course, you know, we already talked about where we play with convergence with Cisco, and we talked about what we're doing within SmartStack there. You know, what's interesting, you know, if you look at a big part of what was driving hyperconvergence, it was simplicity, right? All the complexity, of pinning up a separate network, storage, a SAN, compute. And the good news is we made huge strides along that in the last couple of years. You look at what Nimble's done with our integration within Cisco, 
we look at our integration within VMware, and it's now possible from a single pane of glass to go in there and bring up that entire stack. I think there's still a role for hyperconvergence, and we see a, a big role for that out there in the marketplace. Uh, but for us, we've been looking for a strategy that says, how do we compete in the market in a way that really adds value within our partners? And how do we do it in a way that addresses the broader needs of our customers? And so for us, our customers are telling us they love the fact that they've got a, a solution that gives them flexibility and scaling, right? So I can independently scale any dimension in that solution. And I think they run into some challenges with some of the hyper-converged solutions that don't offer that same level of flexibility. Yeah, so let me ask you, when we dig into hyper-convergence, one of the things that is kind of a huge benefit to customers is really migration costs. So if you think of traditional storage, uh, when I get the device, you know, of course I need to migrate on it. When I'm adding or removing nodes, there's usually uh, challenges in how I do that. And if I'm you know, getting rid of a box, uh, you know, there's migration costs. So uh, it, with hyper-converge, when adding is no, nodes are as simple as just plugging it in, and, and it just becomes you know, a single distributed pool, uh, you know, I kind of eliminate those. So you know, is, is that something that Nimble's helping to, to solve, okay, kind of those migration costs? Yeah, I mean, look, there's no question that's been a big part of the value prop. And you know, more and more these days, our customers aren't tolerant of any kind of downtime, whether it's data migration, whether it's transitioning arrays from one location to another, and that's where we think you know, scale out data services are so fundamental. Even if I don't need that performance for a single app across an entire cluster, the ability to kind of seamlessly come in and add compute and add storage, seamlessly migrate that data and do it all without downtime is really essential. And so I do think that's an important trend. I think it's one that's going to continue. And I know we've talked in the, in the past about, you know, the Wikibon perspective there. If you can't offer those kind of continuous data services, that becomes a real challenge in the competitive space. All right, and the last piece was really kind of the capacity discussion, uh, things like scale out NAS, and you said maybe there's even uh, another category that you wanted to bring up. Yeah, you know, and that's a space that, you know, I think where we've seen movement to the cloud, that's been one of the most aggressive areas, right? That on-prem NAS has been moving more and more quickly to the cloud. The flexibility and the agility that the cloud brings is a, is a real trend there. And I think that trend is going to continue. Nimble is not directly today playing in that space today. We've chosen to focus on the applications that really need that high availability and performance, so we're around, like you know, the databases and the mission critical applications in that space. But I think we're going to continue to see that growth, and we're going to continue to see a way where customers are looking to migrate very seamlessly from, how do I take that stuff that's deployed in the cloud, and how do I interoperate it with what I have back in the prem? And solutions that facilitate that migration back and forth are going to be more and more important as we go forward. And then I, I think the other trend that I was referring to was, the data analytics in the cloud, the, the, where we play within InfoSight, and I think more and more what we're seeing is the need to have visibility that goes beyond just the storage component of the infrastructure. So what we're saying is, you know, as an example, we put out a feature earlier this year that we call VM Vision. And so that was extending the ability of InfoSight to manage not just the nimble arrays, but actually be able to go all the way up the stack so that in the virtualization layer, I could re resolve a latency problem, whether it exists in the compute layer, in the, in the SAN, or all the way back in uh, the, the storage itself. And I think that's going to be a trend we see more and more of. And part of our vision is, how do we continue to extend what we're doing beyond storage and take on a broader component of the entire data center over Yeah, that, that, that's great, love that. Uh, you know, the discussion we've had kind of in big data for the years is, uh, it, it's not just about collecting data or storing data uh, in the storage, when I can leverage that in data, uh, you know, create new insights, new information, and, and heck, even new businesses, uh, then it almost doesn't matter what it costs to do that, because I'm going to drive new business, uh, new business value right. and, and be able to just get, you know, just, you know, incrementally so much more out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it, it's amazing when you have the right set of big data at the right point, it not only helps the customer really manage their entire data center, but because of that changing relationship between the customer and the vendor, you know, we find, for example, we're able to learn things about what our customer base is doing that immediately trans back in, into changes into our roadmap. You know, we can, if we have a bug or potentially service impacting issue, suddenly we can now determine are 10 of our customers vulnerable, or is it 100, or is it 1,000? And then take the appropriate remediation tactics with that data. And I think that is a really exciting thing that will allow our customers to get that 
five nines plus availability that wouldn't be possible without that kind of visibility. In the, in All right, so Dan, Dan, I want to give you the final word, uh, you know, in the interview here. It's, it's, you're talking to your customers, you know, where are their minds at, you know, when it looks at kind of the storage market and the solutions in general, uh, what, what's kind of top of mind for them? Yeah, well, it, no surprise, right, with the changes going on in our industry, there's a lot more uncertainty. And I think a lot more of them are asking questions about when they're making a decision, they're thinking a lot more about not just what the product they're buying today is, but wanting to understand the long-term relationship they're going to have with their vendor. I mean, that's been true for a long time, but it feels to me like the whole way they're viewing entering a new relationship has evolved. And they want to know not just where their vendor is today, but kind of what's the vision over the coming year or two. And I think it's important for all of us in the industry not to be afraid to have that long-term conversation about where we're going and helping our customers be on that long-term path with us. And it's something we're excited to be a part of as we go forward here. All right, well Dan, appreciate you sharing some of the vision as to where Nimble's going and where your customers' minds are at. Uh, I'm sure we will catch up with you many more events going forward. And we've got some other Nimble folks and customers coming on the program uh, later this week. So stay right with us. We'll be right back with our next guest here from theCUBE at Oracle Open World 2015.